Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I am very sorry that I have gone off track <laughs> and a bit AWOL from um, my planned Q video um, schedule but um, life just sometimes gets in the way a little bit. I've been struggling a little with my um, mental health and um, as I think I've explained before, YouTube doesn't make me, uh, you know, much money at all. I think it's something like 50p a video or something like that. So, um, unfortunately, when I'm struggling a bit, YouTube is the first thing to go because um, it's not something that keeps a roof over my head. So, I kind of have to prioritise those things that do keep a roof over my head, like um, my day-to-day -day work. So, um, yeah, I thought it's become a little bit overwhelming to go and um, edit the whole Q part three and then I've got a further part four to do. Um, so I thought I'd do a little circuit breaker and um, just do kind of like a little update. I've got a hack to share with you uh, with Calatheas um, and I thought I'd show you my IKEA greenhouse cabinet as it is. Um, it's not completed, it's not perfect, but I thought I would share it because I think it's interesting. Um, so yeah, um, make sure you let me know how you guys are doing in the comments. I do miss <laughs> interacting with you guys in the comments. It's something I really enjoy. So um, please let me know how you're doing. I'd love to hear. Um, so the hack, I have come across something that I feel is genius personally, although obviously I'm sure I'm not the first person to have come across this, um, but Calatheas and Marantas and Stramanthes, Stramanthes? <laughs> I never know how to say that, Stramanth Stramanthes and Tenanths. I really wish that I knew <laughs> Latin pronunciation, but then who does? I suppose it's quite an ancient language. Um, so those um, plants, they're all sort of semi-related and um, they struggle in my care usually because they need a consistent uh, watering. They need uh, to be relatively moist for a lot of the time. They don't like to dry out. They need a decent amount of humidity. So I raise you self-watering pots. Um, so this little fella has done extremely well um, considering the amount of neglect I have given him over the years. Oh, that's my eye. <laughs> Best not to poke myself in the eye. Um, but this, I mean, so he'd begun to really struggle. He began to die back and was not doing very well. I think he had something like seven or eight leaves. And as you can see now, he is doing incredibly well. So this is the Stramanth, Stramanthi Trio Star. No, Magic Star. Stramanth Magic Star. Um, and this was given to me a few years back by my lovely brother. And as you can see, um, he is poking out a new leaf here. Uh, ooh, a new leaf here. A new leaf here. And we've got another one here. Um, and we've got some little, I don't know if you can see it very well, some little um, shoots at the bottom here as well. Um, you can see evidence of my previous um, abuse of this poor plant. Um, <laughs> but basically what I have here is an Elho um, outer pot and I have an, a self-watering insert. So I think I've shown this on a previous update video um, and I have kind of shared this hack before but I thought I should show you um, evidence that it is actually working. Um, so you've got this um, gauge here um, and this shows you where the water is so you can see that probably is bobbing up and down as I as I move it around. Um, so that's on a little float and um, the soil is nicely moist but not wet and um, that is exactly what we want it to be and this lovely plant is loving it I mean look at this can you see this stem here it is just going for it loving life um, so that's not the only one um, because I have a few um, different calatheas and stramanthes, stramanthes and I have some in another room which I'll come and show you shortly Here's another one who has suffered the spider mites and all sorts, but as you can see, um, is looking actually very happy um, in this self-watering pot situation. So you can see it's an Elho pot. Um, 
But yeah, this is the uh, Calathea lancifolia, aka rattlesnake Calathea. Um, it really needs a good dusting actually. I've not really looked after this plant very well, but doing very, very well. Um, so he's got a couple of new leaves and these are the leaves that don't have spider mite damage and thrip damage. So this one is, is a lovely prime example of a new leaf. Doing extremely well, happy, happy plant don't jinx it <laughs> um seems to really really like this um self-watering situation um i've got another one here so as you can probably see on all of these they've got a little bit of uh history of neglect um you can see a bit of crispy leaf here um but they have really bounced back as you can see with this lovely pink um fresh new growth um no crispy here very happy um, and lots of lovely new leaves coming through at the back here as well so um, this one is the um, stromanth trio star um, and this one has really picked up and got a lot happier since i've moved it into a self-watering pot i'm not done um i just have to fi find it behind me should have positioned this better so here is my real sad tale, okay? Um, this lovely orbifolia um, was a very large, lovely orbifolia from Ikea, I believe a few years back. And over the years, just succumbed again and again and again to thrips. Um, and eventually I was left with this single leaf and what looked like a very dead um, central kind of stock, I suppose. Um, and so I converted him to self-watering a little while ago and it took quite a while but now that we're in spring he has started shooting up. So you've got one, two, oh that's my head, one, two, three and there was one more I'm sure of it um, somewhere in the soil as well. So I think we've got four little shoots. Um, yeah there's another, you can't, we probably can't see it but there's another little one down there so um, he is really bouncing back and I'm super excited to see how he comes back and try and protect him from the thrips. Um, this is such a weird pot, this is in the biggest pot um, but has one single leaf, um, yeah it's a bit odd but you can probably hear that sloshing around because it's right by the mic. Um, so yeah, this is another of the Alho pots, it's just a different style. Um, so yeah, really happy about those. Um, what else? I'm not sure there's anything else to show you in here, so I think we will imminently move into the other room where I have my um, IKEA greenhouse cabinet set up. Right, so this is my ikea greenhouse cabinet which you can't see at all <laughs> okay i'm gonna to have to rethink this um so just for context i've had this uh this is the ikea mills bow in black and i've had this for nearly a year now i think but i've never really fully got to grips with um putting it together so just in the last couple of months um probably weeks actually um i've got a bit more on top of putting it all together and making sure there's airflow through there and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, I'm going to flip this around um, so that you can have a proper look. Okay, so this is the Total Mills bow. That's better, it's not showing quite such a crazy light. Um, so I'll show you it like this. Um, in the uh, bottom left hand corner we've got a um, humidifier. Uh, which I try and put on at least once a day um, but I do like to um, open the door a little bit every now and again just to make sure there's some decent airflow coming through. Um, so what do we have here? So this is my lovely um, Hoya Callistophylla and this is on its second flowering um, so those are the lovely little blooms about to reflower. Um, you can see one of them has dropped off here. Um, I don't know why it kind of died, but it died quite rapidly. Um, but I am getting the hang of getting that to reflower. Um, I've got a little hygrometer here, so a little temperature and humidity gauge. It's quite a decent temperature in here, 22.5 degrees um, and 80% humidity. 
Um, so what I have used for the back here is a um, pegboard from IKEA um, and I've used some little hooks um, to hold on to my air plants. I do need to give these a bit of a soak, they're looking a little bit dry um, but throughout here you can probably see some air plants hanging around. Um, I've got my Tillandsia uh, Spanish moss on the other side over there. I have a very uh, <laughs> bit of a mishmash down here, let's be honest. So let's work our way downwards. Um, right, if I turn off this one, then we can see it nicely. So here I have a Nepenthes. Um, I haven't quite got the humidity right because these um, jars are kind of drying out. So I need to figure that out, um, but we'll get there. Um, I have my lovely jewel orchid here. Um, the bottom of it unfortunately rotted, it's sitting there. I'm not quite sure if there's any life left in there, so I just thought I'd leave that there for now. Um, but as you can see, it's got a lovely big root growing um, just here, so that should be okay. Always take a cutting to preserve your plants in case they get rot. Um, this is a lovely little begonia Cleopatrae, Cleopatrae. But I don't know how to say that. Um, <laughs> they're very cheap now in the garden centre. They used to be really expensive. Um, here, I need to figure out this little um, situation here, but they're just kind of sitting on top of each other. Are two um, jewel orchids. Um, they seem to be fine. I find that this little cup is nice to um, bottom water from. Probably need to do that soon. Um, equally, this little tray that they're sitting on here is nice to bottom water from as well. Then we have my gorgeous um, philodendron uh, melanocrysum. This one got a little bit um, et oh, oops, <laughs> etiolated in the lack of light um, that I had it in. So um, I need to kind of chop and prop that at some point, but I can't quite bring myself to. So we'll get there eventually. Um, but he has, as you can probably see, had a bit, quite a bit of thrip damage. Sad times. Um, something to keep on top of. This fella also has had quite a bit of thrip damage. Um, these damn thrips, I need to figure out how the hell to keep on top of them for life. Um, but this is my Anthurium clarinervum, clarino clari clarinervium, <laughs> my original one. Um, I don't, I think I might have done an unboxing or it was on Instagram, I'm not quite sure. But this is my old boy. Um, these things seem to freaking love thrips. Um, then I've got my gorgeous uh, Begonia brevimosa. So this one was in a large terrarium which had an incident. Um, so yeah, I know some people will feel a little bit uncomfortable with the broken glass that I have here. But um, so we've got Begonia amphioxus here, which is doing pretty well. Um, we've got a dead leaf. We've got um, a Syngonium. Um, Albo variegata, I think that is. We've got a Raphidophora hayi, I think this is. And we've got a Monstera dubia as well here. Um, I think that's everything in that little terrarium. I really need to sort it out, but I'm just a little apprehensive because I know that there is glass in there. It's not a reason to not do it, but I just need to figure out how to do it safely. Um, then we have, I'm just going to open this other door in here. So then we've got this gorgeous Miltoniopsis, um, lovely flower, lovely scent. Um, I did buy this in flower, so I can't take credit for it, but it's doing pretty well um, from Wild Roots in Poole in the UK. Um, it's very happy in this humidity situation. We've got a Philodendron Pink Princess, which I possibly need to pot up. He's getting a little bit big. Um, and I have just got some... Blah, blah, blah. Where is it? P -p 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 can't remember the name of this one. Um, oh, I'll have to put it on the screen. But um, this is just some propagations that's been living in this cabinet since, like, forever. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much everything that's in here. Um... If I, I'll show you what it looks like with the humidifier. 
so I normally set it to one hour. This humidifier is pretty good to be honest with you. I think it only cost me like £25, £30 off of Amazon and I don't personally feel you need anything much more than this. Um, so I will put a link in the description. Um, but yeah, so this is what it looks like and it's actually just quite nice to sit back and watch the humidifier going in here. It is lovely. And uh, we have a little audience. Lucy? <laughs> Don't mind the mess, it's all me, it's not Craig. It's never Craig, it's always me. Um, so yeah, really pleased with that to be honest with you. Okay, and we have moved into another room. This is the office. Um, so I thought I would just give you a little update on where we're at. I have not tidied, so just bear that in mind. This will be tidier at some point in the future. Um, <laughs> what I'm saying is don't judge me, please. <laughs> so this is what I really wanted to show you, to be honest. Um, so this is my gorgeous uh, Maranta Kershaviana Variegata um, and it is actually, I do need to add some water because it has finally dried out but this is in a Le Chusa self-watering plant pot and if you can see this damn thing is prolific um, it is seriously taking over a bit here um, it's kind of pulled back from the window, the window is over here it's a south facing window um, it doesn't, you know, it's not getting super direct light, but that's kind of perfect for a Maranta really because they are forest floor, um, or rainforest floor plants. Um, so he doesn't want super direct light. Um, so he's getting a little bit yellow here. I think that's because I've missed a water, like I've missed filling up this. Can you see here? Um, it is at the empty gauge <laughs> so I do need to fill that up but um yeah what a happy plant super cool um love that I also wanted to show you my lovely begonias here so um here is my begonia um erythrophylla aka beefsteak begonia which has really recovered um since it got thrips and it died all the way back to, down to the rhizome um it kind of has overbalanced here a little bit um i don't know if you can really tell but um that rhizome has just kind of split under the under the weight um but it's still doing fine so i don't want to mess with it um i'll have a think about what to do and then we've got my gorgeous begonia aldermore um, which if you remember, you might remember it if you watched my video of Burford Garden Centre um, is where this lovely plant is from. I have a hom homolamina also in a self-watering pot, loving life, getting very, very prolific. Bought this as a little baby probably no more than like two, three months ago and it is very happy. My um, variegated alocasia is also in a self-watering pot and is finally growing a new leaf which you probably can't see very well here but um, there we go so that is those lovely plants I have a little sort of begonia station these are some doing well some doing not so well um, trying to get the hang of the right watering um, situation for all of these so We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, oh, I never show this one. So this is my gorgeous um, Monstera Thai Constellation. And she has just thrown out a new leaf. So if you can see that, it's a little bit high for me to see on a daily basis. Um, but that is the lovely Monstera Thai Constellation. This, <laughs> this leaf kind of grew up against a wall. So I think it's permanently, permanently bent like that. And then just for um, your information, this is how my plant station situation is going. So um, what I have here is two Iva bookcases um, from Ikea or shelving units, I should perhaps say. Um, I have a big um, box um, with a grow light on top of it and I've got lots of gorgeous plants growing in here see if you can guess what is in here I then have one of these little trays from Ikea it looks really yellow it's not that yellow um, 
with a load of plants in it um, under the grow light. I have another one. This is mostly begonias and terracotta. They seem to be doing very well. I've got another little grow box here. I've got some, um, what are they called? Anthurium clarinerviums in um, Lekka and sitting in some water. I do need to change the water because this is kind of the first pass. Um, but they're doing pretty well. I have another um, propagation box. And can you see, I don't know if you'll be able to see this properly anyway, but this is a, oh, can I open this? It's hard to do one handed. Let's see. Can you see what I can see? Look at that freaking gorgeous begonia. <laughs> um, so yes, little box of amazingness in there. Um, so yes, that's that's pretty much me. Um, lovely, lovely lovelies. Need to look after these. Um, a gorgeous fern I've been trying to keep healthy and happy and doing pretty well. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my plant situation. So um, I am obviously in a bit of a state of not being tidy um, and that needs to change, but it will. Don't you worry, don't you worry. And um, yeah, my plant's doing pretty well. I, I'm not sure how much you guys are interested in orchids, but I, I do plan to do a bit of orchid stuff. I recently went to the um, Bournemouth Orchid Society meeting which is really cool I've got a little sticker for my car um, I've got really into my orchids lately and um, really chuffed about it honestly so um, I think that's something that I do want to share but um, as you can see it is a forever kind of work in progress trying to figure out the right balance of plants and my plants needs but um, I'm pretty happy with where we're at with the calatheas and the morantas while I'm remembering that, one more calathea. Whoop, whoop, whoop. This lovely calathea mosaica was finally starting to look really unhappy. Um, probably around about January this year, and I repotted him into this self watering pot. And he is perking up, he has got new leaves, he is loving life, and I'm very happy about it. So, um, yeah all is going well in the plant care region so um yeah let me know if you've got any hacks like my self-watering hack um and yeah i just i'm so glad that my calatheas are not dying anymore because you know they're expensive and i i think they're really pretty and i kind of want to tell everyone about this <laughs> um but obviously it does add a bit of cost onto your plant care situation. However, I would argue if it means that your plants don't die, um, it's a cost worth spending. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, it's really cool to be back chatting to you guys. I hope to not be so long next time. I will try and get the queue videos completed. Just please bear with me. Um, but I think I'll try and do some more simple videos um, in the future because just in terms of time, it's really hard to get stuff edited when it's quite complex and uh, <laughs> long winded. Like, I mean, I love Q, don't get me wrong. I loved doing that. I love doing those videos. It's just life also needs to happen. So um, yeah, cool. Thank you for watching as always. Don't forget to like and subscribe, comment. If you um, have any tips for me, I'm always in need. I'm always open, ears wise. <laughs> um, so that would be great. Thank you guys and I'll see you again next time. Bye.